waiting for Councilmember Medina. Um, while we're waiting, um, I might just go ahead and um, call the meeting to order. Um, so the meeting for Jan February 22nd uh, for the Public Relations, Communications, Tourism, uh, Libraries, Boards, Commissions, and Citizens Group Committee is uh, called to order. And our first order of business is approval of the minutes. Oh, actually, I think we have announcements first. So does anybody have any announcements that they would like to make um, as we begin the meeting? Midori. I am really excited that our bookmobile is finally launching. And if you're able to be at the launch with us, it is taking place tomorrow at 11 a.m. at the AMC. We would love to see you there. Thank you so much. And I was really excited to see as I was looking at the library programs that Mission Viejo Library is doing a stuffed animal sleepover where kids have yesterday dropped off their favorite stuffed animals who are doing a sleepover and then they're going to have a little follow-up story time um, after the stuffed animal sleepover so i thought that was very cute so cute yes it's very popular <laughs> and yeah. i can assure you all the stuffed animals have a really good time overnight at the library <laughs> well i will have to make sure we do that with Ellis's stuffies next year. Um, but I thought that was super cute when I saw that. Um, and also thanks to the libraries because I will be holding my town hall, my Saturday town hall at Mission Viejo Library this upcoming Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Um, and our uh, commission for older adults that same day at two in the afternoon is holding an intergenerational trivia and banana split event at Mission Viejo Library. So many, many thanks to the library for hosting so many different uh, community events and opportunities. Um, all right, any other of, um, announcements that anybody has? Okay. Laura said she'll be on in just a minute. She's running a little late. Okay. Well, then um, we can wait for Laura as well. I apologize. I didn't even check to make sure that we had all the staff that we need. Um, so we don't have Laura. I think we have everybody else, though. Um, so we will wait just a minute. Um, but while we're waiting, um, Council Member Murillo, do you have any changes to the minutes for our last meeting? Nope, no changes. Um, and I saw that Stephanie sent over the items uh, since 2017 for, for the committee, uh, I think it was yesterday. So I'll take a look and let you know if there's anything um, in terms of future agenda items. Okay, excellent. Um, then we will go ahead and wait a few more minutes. We're also still troubleshooting Council Member Medina joining um and he has tried every way oh it's probably a password issue with um his actual whole account i was having some issues with okta yesterday so i think it's that um so i'm gonna send him um the call-in number Okay. Or maybe he can see it. Um, I guess while we wait, um, I just wanted to let everyone know if you weren't al already aware, um, that the ACAD, Aurora Culture Arts District, um, organization is going to be having their ribbon cutting today at four thirty. So, um, after this um, meeting, I will be headed on over to to celebrate. No, oh, I didn't know that. I might have to see if I can. Well, it's a bit more of a drive for me than for you, so I might not uh, do that, actually. <laughs> but please tell them um, that I hope they're having or that I hope they have a great 
meeting. Um, I'll do that. Or a great ribbon cutting. Sorry, I'm also trying to get information over to Councilmember Medina while I'm doing this. Councilmember Coons, I'm happy to help with that. So you can, unless you want to wait for him. Um, I am just going to text him this real quick. Okay. Thank you. The call in number, because I think that's since he's having the email issues. Uh. All right, so hopefully we will have council member Medina shortly um, by phone. Hey, Brian, uh, it says now that we're the, it says live on the top. Does that mean we're live now? Yeah, it's working. We got we got it connected. Yep. Okay, great. We are streaming. We're just waiting for a couple more people. So my apologies. I did not ensure that we had everybody. Before Laura we got said started. if we can go ahead and get started without her, if you'd like. Okay, and we might go ahead and get started as well without Council Member Medina. Okay. Um, we have the minutes approved by Council Member Murillo and myself as written. Um, so we will go ahead and move on to the rest of the agenda. Um, we have for new items, the Reimagine Aurora Public Library 2023 campaign um, with Midori Clark as our presenter. So, Midori, if you want to go ahead. I do. Let me share my screen. Okay. We are very, very excited for 2023 at the library. We have a lot of cool things coming up. And so I just wanted to share with all of you some information about our reimagining of Aurora Public Libraries and take you a little bit to the past, the present, and the future. So very quickly, the past, we had an incredible 2022. And I just wanted to share some of these enormous milestones with you. I don't know um, if you've heard about Aurora Scholars or if you know what this program is, but we honor about uh, 450 students throughout the city of Aurora at APS, Cherry Creek, as well as a lot of independent schools and private schools. Um, 450 plus students uh, get recognized for their excellent character, their community involvement and engagement and just kind of overall excellence. And we had, um, with those 450 students, 2,100 attendees over two nights at Central Library. This was totally new for us. Um, we typically do this at a local high school that's a lot larger, um, and it presented a lot of different logistics issues, but we really got the team together to work it out, and it went very smoothly. We'll be doing it again at the library and we hope that you will um, join us in handing out certificates to um, these students who are really awesome and really just were so excited for the recognition. Um, the project was so amazing that it was awarded by the Colorado Association of Libraries, the 2022 Colorado Library Project of the Year. This is a super prestigious award and you know, it's not Midori Clark saying, oh, didn't we do such a great job? This is a group of our peers from libraries all over the state of Colorado who go over the nominations and select the thing that they think is the best. And they really thought Aurora's project was the best. So we were really, really excited to um, receive that recognition for the team. Um, we are also working through our Central Libraries Refine and Redesign project. We've uh, installed some incredible new public art, 
uh, got some new furniture, done some new layout and kind of decluttered. Um, we invite you to come and check it out if you haven't seen it recently. Also, another big project for 2022 was the appointment of Aurora's third poet laureate, Asia Fox. She's been doing um, a lot of different appearances all across the city at different events. I hope that you have had a chance to check her out. And if you haven't seen her perform yet, hopefully you will be at an event soon where she will be and uh, she will be performing. And then just kind of our last big programming note, we had um, two uh, new Dr. Sue story times this year that we had never done before. And we had over 300 people who attended the event at the Central Library and we had over 1200 people who attended the Talons Reach Grinch themed story time. It was kind of a surreal day. It was incredible to see so many people packed into the library and it was just a really, really successful event that we're hoping to do again. Um, I'm really proud of how the team has pulled together to really create an incredible 2022. Um, just to kind of look at some of the statistics year over year, I've got the 2019 on there so you can see kind of what a pre pandemic year would have looked like for us. And then, you know, where we are at the end of 2022. And it's kind of exciting because we're, you know, almost almost about back to half where we were on our library visits, which is great news. Um, we typically have more than a million visitors in a year to our library locations, and people are always kind of surprised to hear that. Um, a real bright spot for us, our checkouts actually have continued to kind of trend upward. And in 2022, with over 1.3 million checkouts, this is the highest amount of checkouts we've had in like the last 12 years. So even though people are not coming to the library as much as they were before the pandemic, they're actually checking out more stuff now than they were before the pandemic, which is really encouraging and I think a really awesome thing to see. Um, same with our program attendance. A pre-pandemic year, we had 126,000 plus people coming to the library for all those great things, Council Member Coombs, that you mentioned at the beginning of the meeting. And, you know, we see this huge increase in 2020 of almost 200,000. And, and, you know, we've, we've really done a lot of analysis on these numbers and we think that was largely because we um, had a very robust virtual programming. Um, component to what we were doing, and we had people attending APL programs from all over the world. Um, 2021, we started to bring kind of more things back in person and less virtual. Um, and in 2022, we're almost exclusively back to in person programming, and you can see the numbers we have, you know, almost 172,000 program attendees, which is enormous. Um, our computer use is kind of going steady with what's happening with our library visits. And then another real bright spot, library cards. This represents our amount of just total overall users. And you can see our total overall users have also gone way up from 2019, where we're at about 100, 260,000 card holders. And now we're approaching 275,000 card holders. And People are always shocked when I talk about this, because if you think about the size of our city, you know, what other organization can claim like two thirds of the city of Aurora as its client base? I think it's pretty um, remarkable. And then just a quick note about our circulation. We have had almost a doubling of our e-circulation, and that does account for some of the boosted um, numbers in our in our checkouts and I want to just specifically point out we um, got some extra money for that collection you guys might remember um, we had a, a little supplement of about fifty thousand dollars for our virtual library and uh, we're very appreciative of that and we were really able to turn that into services for the city um, gosh I hope this works we were really lucky to be approached by comcast for um they they were really interested in doing a free public service announcement for us 
So we packed into the library, the central library on a Sunday when it was still closed. And we had more than 150 people show up to be in this commercial. So I just want to share it with you now. And I'm hoping the sound is what I've been having trouble with. So I can't see you all. If somebody would just say we can't hear it, um, I might try to troubleshoot it and we'll go from there. We can't hear it. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh boy, and I'm not sure exactly how, gosh, it's the day of technical difficulties. Um, Michael, or d does anybody have any ideas for how to get the sound to play? Midori, you might look at, um, I'm more familiar with Teams than I'm on WebEx. There are three dots down by the egg, the red exit circle. Click on those three dots and see if anything pops up there for you. Okay. Um, I'm in the sharing mode. And I don't see the three dots. Um, Midori, can you say anything at the top of your screen where it says edit, share, view, audio, and video? Can you say any of that? Um, let's see. I can. Okay, I can get to the audio. The speaker. I wonder if I unplug my headset, if that would work. Be worth a try. <laughs> okay. That could be the issue. Okay, let me let let's just see if that works. That didn't work either. I'm hearing something. Maybe turn up the volume. I don't know if that's possible. Okay, I feel like we're getting closer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to skip this for now and just keep going. And then um, I'm going to run and go talk to Abraham and see if he can help. Okay, so the present, um, the purpose of our whole reimagine Aurora Public Library campaign is to just increase usage. Um, our goals for 2023 are very ambitious, but we think they are achievable based on kind of where we've been in our past. So we're really looking to reach that 1.5 million mark for the checkouts. Anything you all can do to help us get there would be very much appreciated. So run down to your local library and check out like seven bags of books and help us get to 1.5 million checkouts. Uh, we are also trying to rebound on our library visit. So we feel really comfortable shooting for 750,000 this year. We know that's still a little bit under where we would typically be in a pre-pandemic year, um, but we think it's a healthy increase and we're really hoping to get there. And then again, we really just want to blow it out of the park with 200,000 program attendees. So again, tell everybody you know about all the things that are happening at the library and invite them to come and connect with people. It's a lot of fun, the things that are going on. Um, we're deploying some pretty specific measures to try to reach these goals. Um, we're really excited that Central Library and Talon's Reach Library both have expanded hours now, which this group definitely knows about. Um, so we're opening at 9 a.m. and closing at 8. And for the first time ever at Talon's Reach Library, we're open on Sundays, and then we've reopened uh, on Sundays as well at Central Library. 
We also had an incredible grand opening of our Chambers Plaza Library and really just tried to get the word out in that community that that library was open. And we're seeing some good increases there on the traffic. It's um, been open kind of in a, a smaller way for the last couple of months of 2022. And the idea was really to have this big grand opening and kind of create an opportunity for people to learn about it. Um, and it seems to be working so far. We also went fine free, which was huge. This was a big deal to our staff that have been wanting to go fine free for a long time um, in a community like ours, even just a $1, $2, $5 fine can present a big barrier for folks and they just never come back. So it's really fun to see that um, those fines have gone away and people are starting to use the library again who might have been scared to come in because they owed money. We had, I just want to tell a quick funny story. We had a woman who came to Mission Viejo Library and returned two books from 2018. So we're super excited that she's back in the door and we've got our stuff back, which is also great news. Um, and then we'll have the ribbon cutting and the launch of the bookmobile tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then this beautiful limited edition library card that you can see in the slide here. We work a lot with Kim's team. They do this beautiful, beautiful work. And you can see that's the whole kind of picture of the reimagine, the, the beautiful um, kind of colorful abstract books, and then also the beautiful word there. So who has gotten their new limited edition library card? Nobody, okay, that will be your homework for the next meeting, please go and do that. So if we already have one, we can get the new fancy one? You can, yes, and okay. please do. Okay, and now I can't get this to advance, here we go. Um, this is the new Chambers Plaza library. It's super beautiful and it's very close to Hinkley High School. Um, it is at 1551 North Chambers Road, just right at Chambers and Colfax. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And again, you can see these beautiful graphics that are on the walls. Kim's team, her very talented, talented graphic designer, Asher, did all of these. And we're really using this as a template for our other libraries as well, using the same kind of color palette as well as some of the same graphic elements. And I think it turned out so beautiful. We had about 160 people for the grand opening, which we were really excited about. This is the new bookmobile. Have you guys seen it yet? Yay, well, now you can see it. It's been on TV quite a bit as well. We've gotten a lot of good press out of it. Uh, Michael Bryant helped us set up the Channel 7 interview. We had a beautiful Aurora TV story. Um, and so we're excited that it's creating a buzz. This is going to be traveling to a lot of different places in the community. And I love this because it's really about taking the library out to people where they are and not so much waiting for people to come to us. So that being said, this will be going to places where, you know, there are large populations of maybe people that have transportation issues. So um, again, older adult centers, community events, we're really excited. We're gonna have a regular stop at Buckley Air Force Base as well. And the grand opening for that again, cause I can't say it enough, is tomorrow at 11 a.m. And then the future, we're really excited. Um, we actually just had our first very, very high level preliminary kickoff meeting with the architects today um, for a $2.5 million renovation of the MLK library um, that will be coming up. That money came directly from the congressional spending bill and will be coming to Aurora, Colorado, courtesy of the federal government. We're really excited about that. We're also just internally as our department targeting the Mission Viejo Library for 2023 to do some improvements. Um, that library is a very nice place to be, but it has seen better days and we really wanna give it a little bit of a refresher. 
we're really hoping to kind of find money in our budget for new furniture and some new paint, some different kinds of things. And we're hoping to do some private fundraising as well. We don't have kind of the money that we wish we had to do the overhaul, but we're looking for ways to just make it a little bit more refreshed and kind of perk it back up. It is our busiest branch library. It does a lot of business and it sees a lot of folks in and out of there and we would like to make it a much more beautiful place to be. And then we also got very lucky this year. It just happens that Talon's Reach Library is on the already scheduled facilities department's um, maintenance list. And so it was on, on the list to be repainted this year. And we've been working with a designer to come up with a paint plan for the library that will be kind of similar to what happened at Chambers Plaza Library. So we'll have two libraries that are branded similarly, and we're really excited that we're kind of starting down that path as well. Uh, Council Member Coombs, can I ask a question? Yeah, of course, go ahead. Thank you. Um, yes, this is really awesome to hear, Midori. Um, in terms of Mission Viejo, isn't that often like a vote voter polling location as well? I recall um, kind of many years of uh, supporting those efforts. Um, I'm wondering if we might be able to reach out to maybe Arapahoe County to see if they, you know, have a vested interest in maybe supporting that facelift, seeing as how, um, you know, we coordinate a lot of electoral work and, you know, the nexus with uh, the county functions. Um, just thought I'd great offer idea. that, or maybe you've already done that. I have not done that. That is a great idea, and I will reach out to them. And I will say I am going to be asking for some one-time funds out of our council one-time appropriations that we're going to be doing um, in March um, as well toward this effort, though I know that the amount that I'm asking for does not cover everything. Um, it's the amount that the library board had reached out to me to discuss, which is $75,000 and then they'll fundraise. They were planning to fundraise the rest through private fundraising, but it is a great idea to definitely ask the county if they would kick in a little since we use that during every election, um, local and um, statewide and federal. So that's, a that's great. great. Idea. Thank that's you great. so much for supporting that and thanks for the great idea and um, yeah, we hope it can just get a little bit of a, a spruce, a spruce up. It certainly deserves it. And it's, you know, one of the libraries that hasn't, you know, seen too, too much of a facelift in a while. So, um, we're excited. Thank you very much for your support and your ideas on that. And that Thank is reimagining the library. Any other questions or comments? Okay. Excellent. Um, thank you so much, um, Council Member Murillo. Do you have any questions? And by the way, Council Member Medina was not able to get through in any method, but he is watching on YouTube and is going to let me know if he has any questions. So while we're waiting for Council Member Medina, Council Member Murillo, do you have any further uh, questions or comments? Um. No questions, just uh, again, really excited for the updates. I uh, am on the list that I also need a new library card as well. Um, I'm going to be at the MLK library for my town hall tomorrow, but I think that actual library closes. So I don't know if there's anyone that could hang back um, well, and me, maybe try let to me see what I can do about get that. everyone their uh, <laughs> library card. <laughs> that might be worth your while. Um, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation, Midori. All right, yeah, thank you so much. And I know that I am going to be attending a baby story time on March 1st, so maybe I'll get my new library card at that point. Um, but that was actually my other question is as you're tracking program attendance, if people do not register in perfect mind, which is not required for program attendance, does that still get counted? And how do you count that program attendance if folks are not registered? That is a great question. And you know, we're we're very analog. We have we just count at each of our programs. Um, 
the staff person just counts who's in the room and then that gets entered into our database. So you'll still be counted if you're not registered. Okay, excellent. And is that similarly for visits? Like if someone's just walking in the door of the library, is, the, is there a way that you just analog count how many people walk in the door also? No, we have far too many visitors to do an analog count of that. We actually have door counters that are installed on all of our entrances uh, to each of our locations. So um, yeah, I, I'm a completely nerdy librarian and I could talk about door counters for hours, but just all you need to know is that we, <laughs> I know Kim's like, what? Um, all you need to know is we do have door counters. They're like physically installed at all of our entrances and they count people coming in and out. And then all of those numbers are uh, uploaded to a database and then we access the database and we're able to pull the numbers from that. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love that. I did not realize that 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 folks get counted in that way automatically. So that we can talk about that maybe offline. I'm very interested in how that works. Um, I suppose other people are probably not quite as interested um, to, to talk about door counters all day, um, but that's excellent. Um, so I know that we also had gotten a system for processing books at Central Library for processing returns. Um, and I did try to do a return the other day through the slot and it seemed like it was locked. I took it inside to the front. Um, is that system functioning? I know there had been some issues with the system. So what is going on with that? Yes, so that is our automated materials handler, better known as the Bookie Monster. We had a really fun contest um, for naming it and Bookie Monster <laughs> was the winner. Um, and it is a little monster and I will just leave it at that. It works, um, it works fairly well most of the time. And there are um, sporadic periods where it has trouble communicating. You know, it's kind of like all of the issues when there's an update with WebEx. As you might imagine, there are firmware updates. There are things happening to our networks. There are like different communication things that come um, into play with all of the different machines on the network. And so that does slow us down sometimes, but we work with our vendor and the city's IT department to get things back up and running. And most okay. of the time it works pretty well. Okay, excellent. I just wasn't sure if there was anything we needed to do to support you all to make sure that that's functioning because obviously it makes the jobs of staff easier um, and helps patrons be able to get materials returned. So just wanted to check on that. Thank um, you. And then the other kind of general question that I consistently have every time we talk about libraries budget and um, staff costs um, is that, you know, when we look at our library staff compared with other staff in the city, in other city departments, um, the pay is lower um, in general than the pay of folks in other departments and the budget of the libraries is significantly lower than the budget of our other departments and um, the whole library and cultural services department has a lower budget um, by a lot. Um, so you all are running tons of programs, having millions of visitors and hundreds of thousands of checkouts and everything that we've seen and getting congressional dollars to update libraries and doing private fundraising. Um, so you're really running an impressive operation on very little resources. And so my question is really, you know, as we're looking at prioritizing our community and those community needs and respecting and prioritizing our employees, um, what, like, are there recruitment and retention struggles associated with that low pay? Um, and then I know there's a classification study being done for employees and where are we in that process? Um, and do we have any idea of what that's looking like in terms of any requests we may have to increase employee pay within the division? 
Well, I'm certainly happy to kind of share my what I know about it with you and, and I see Laura's on there and I know um, Laura, please feel free to chime in as well. I think, you know, we we have been very lucky with our recruitment and retention so far. You know, that's not to say things can't change, but I think, you know, we have a really innovative library system and we fill a real niche in the market, if you will. You know, we're kind of the startup innovating library. It might not be that library that you're kind of have your sights on for end of career, but it is really that library where people can launch their careers. They can be first time librarians, which it's very difficult to get your foot in the door in the library industry in the metro area. Um, you know, you could be a supervisor for the first time at Aurora Public Library. So I think that we're really uniquely positioned in the market, which has made things, you know, fairly smooth for us um, because we're not kind of competing with other libraries for the same kinds of employees. Does that make sense? Um, so I think from that perspective, we've been in good shape. You know, we've really been working with HR and Laura to address the compensation concerns. You know, I just had a meeting with Laura today. She's really excited to share with me that, you know, all of our employee um, wages will be at a minimum of $15 an hour now, which I'm really excited about because nobody does this job for the money. They do this job because they love the community and they really want to help people. And we saw that even in the culture and engagement survey, survey results for library and cultural services, our highest rated questions were about, do you find your work personally meaningful? Do you want to serve the community? Do you have a passion for your work? Those were our top three answers. And so, people really do this job because they want to be in community. They want to engage, they want to help. So, you know, all that being said, it's nice that we are gonna be able to raise the wages just preliminarily um, working with Ryan Lance and Laura on the uh, compensation study. Many of our frontline category ranges are going to be adjusted upward. And I'm again, very excited to see that I think you know, like I said, nobody does this for the money, but it's great that we're going to be able to compensate people at a little bit of a higher range because the work that they do is so important. You know, no, we're never going to be police officers, but we have that opportunity to do that secondary intervention, to be there for kids, to be those stable adults in a lot of these people's lives and not just children, but folks who are isolated and lonely. You know, people who are experiencing economic hardships, mental health issues, like the library is there for all of these people, as well as for parents, you know, like yourself, Council Member Coombs, you want to find a place to take your kid that's safe where they can learn, interact with other children. Like, this is what the library does in the community. And so I'm really pleased that we're going to be able to shift a lot of those ranges upward. But yes, we can Great. always use more money. <laughs> well, <Always>. I'm, <laughs> I'm really glad to to hear that, and it's something I've been on about for <laughs> for pretty much my whole time on council. So I'm glad that that is happening and that you guys are getting that. But you know, I look forward to continuing to evaluate and making sure that we're really recognizing that hard work and commitment from our library employees. And I thank you for. You know, for also working on that and making sure that we that we are doing our best to care for those employees. Thank you. All right. Let me see if Councilmember Medina had any questions. No questions from Councilmember Medina. So anything else before we move on? All right. Seeing none. Thank you so much, Midori, and. Um, Thank you, Councilmember Murillo, for your questions as well. Um, do you have? Do we have any miscellaneous items for consideration? All right, seeing none, um, we'll move on to our next meeting, which is scheduled for March twenty second um, at three thirty p.m. Are there any conflicts with that time? 
Okay, seeing none, we will go ahead and plan to have the meeting at that time. Um, and that's our last item. So uh, thank you all so much. Have a wonderful day, week and weekend, and we will see you again next time. And we'll see some of you tomorrow for the bookmobile. <laughs> Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.